Hi, this is Dr. Dan here and welcome back to another video about chemistry. So today we're going to be looking at chemical equilibria, which or chemical equilibrium, which what this has to do with is looking at chemical reactions and really how they're creating reactants and products. So with these types of reactions, we are always looking at a balance of both the forward reaction and the reverse reaction. So what exactly does that mean? Well, many different reactions, one thing that we will find out throughout chemistry is that they are reversible, meaning that they don't only occur only in one direction. So in previous videos and all over the, and probably in your chemistry class, one thing that you saw that, that most of these reactions, they occur in the forward direction, meaning that you have reactants on the left-hand side, products on the right, and you see that reaction created. However, a lot of these different reactions as well have uh, can also go in the reverse, meaning that if reactants are colliding together to make products, products could also be colliding with each other as particles to make reactants. So you not only have a forward, but you have a reverse reaction as well. And this is what the process of chemical equilibrium is all about, which I'm going to show you in this video and go through a lot of different tips and tricks of really what it is that you're going to be expecting up, up and coming. So we're going to go through examples and also do a bunch of different things and show dem scientific demonstrations as well. So please hit that like and subscribe button and stay tuned for more. So now let's look at an actual chemical example. So above me, what you are seeing is that we are mixing an iodine solution with an acid, and this is called the iodine clock reaction. And one thing that you're seeing right now is that colors are constantly changing. You see it's going from this blue purple color to clear, and it's going back and forth. Now what this is showing firsthand is not only chemical equilibrium, but also a concept known as chemical kinetics as well, which is the speed of a reaction. So what you are seeing is reactants are going to products. So one, it's going from a blue color to a clear color, and you are seeing where the products get converted back to the reactants, meaning that chemical equilibrium is this dynamic con concept where not only are we showing a forward and the reverse direction, but we also need to show that we can have reversible reactions. So what you are going to be constantly seeing is a double-sided arrow to show that reactions are reversible, meaning that they can go in both directions. So what are some different important things that we need to know? Well, one of them is a chemical equilibrium. When is it achieved? Well, it's when the rate or how fast are you making products or of the forward reaction is equal to that of the reverse reaction, so making reactants. So remember, it's a double-sided arrow. So when both those are equal to each other, equilibrium is achieved. We are achieving balance and harmony. So that also means that the ratio of the concentrations of both the reactants and the products is now considered to be constant. And that's when equilibrium is achieved. Now, depending on the level of chemistry that you are taking, hopefully that you get one of the more simpler ones, which we're going to go through simple examples here. And then we'll have different different future videos as well to go through different example problems and harder concepts. Now, where does that all start? Well, that all starts with the equilibrium constant. Now, the equilibrium constant, the way that that is generally represented is with the letter K. So K is something where it is a simple formula where what we are doing is we're taking the concentration of the products and we're putting that all over the concentration of the reactants. So if I have a chemical formula, we will be representing all these in concentration or molarity, and we are going to be raising these values to the power of their coefficients, meaning that if I have, let's say, a Let's say if we have the following formula, so if I have coefficients for both reactants and products here, if I had like A over A, um, so A is a coefficient and A and big A is the, is the actual um, K 
chemical, and that's reacting with B. And let's say that makes C. Well, the way that we can show this formula is products over reactants, meaning that I would put products, so I put the product C up in top, and then I would put my reactants, which would be A raised to the power of A, and my other product B raised to the power of B, and that would be equal to K. Now, one thing about K is that it comes in a bunch of different ways and it represents different meanings. So one thing is depending on the size of your K value. So if K is a constant, meaning it's a number, if K is greater than one, it favors the products, meaning if it's a big number. If K is less than one, that means it favors the reactants. And this has to do directly with the concentrations of each species at equilibrium. So keep that in mind. And if K is equal to one, that means that both the reactants and the products are equal to each other within these reactions. So how else can we also show this? Well, K typically has a different subscript that is next to it, which represents whatever type of reaction it is describing. There are all kinds of different K values. For example, you could have where you have Ka. This represents an acid. You could have Kb. This could be tell, talking about a base dissociating. You could have Kc, which is all about concentration. You could have Keq, which is just referring to equilibrium within a reaction. You could also have uh, KSP, which talks about the solubility of a different reaction. And if you've gone through pH before, then you might have seen KW, which is all about how water, how that dissociates. And then lastly, you could also have KP, which is pressure. So this is a lot of different equilibrium constants and can get really overwhelming. With most introductory chemistry examples, you're usually going to be sticking around maybe KC or potentially KEQ as well, which these are usually representing the same concept. Now, if you're in, in a more advanced chemistry class, you probably will start seeing KAs, KBs, and KWs. In general chemistry too, KP and KSP are going to be more common. So what do we know about these K values? Well, there's some important rules. We can't only just write the formulas products of reactants. The one thing that only can be included in here is that you can only include gases and aqueous phases of chemicals. You never include solids and liquids when you are going through this reaction. So it's only gases and aqueous mediums when you are going through this. So let's try and practice writing a couple different expressions. So if I have the following question, let's say if we want to write a KC equation here. So first things first is when we are going through this, we're only going to be writing the KC for products over reactants. So if I look at my products, I see that I have F minus as a product, and that is aqueous, so we keep it. We have H3O plus, that is also aqueous that is written on top. And notice how there's no coefficients. So we do not have to worry about writing a value here. They would be represented by the value one being the coefficients are one. So being that that is being said, we also have in our reactants, we have HF and water. Well, one thing that you'll notice is that water is a liquid. So based on our first rule, we, in our second rule, we do not include water. So we're only going to have HF as a product. And this would be the answer for our question. Now, could this only rep be represented as KC? Well, if you might have maybe noticed is that HF is an acid. So this could have also been represented as Ka, and this would have been a correct expression. So there are multiple, you could have more than one answer for your K. As long as you're representing it as an equilibrium constant, you're okay. But keep in mind, there, are, there could be multiple different possibilities. Let's try another. What if I want to say, let's write the solubility product 
of magnesium hydroxide, which tells you that, okay, what is solubility product? Well, going back to previous videos of solubility, which is all about, well, if I have MgOH and I throw this in water, how is it going to dissolve? So if we have that double arrow, the way that this is going to dissolve, it's going to make its individual ions. So we'll have magnesium 2 plus and then two hydroxide ions that are all going to be made in solution. So being that these are aqueous, these are our ions, but it's talking about dissolving magnesium hydroxide. So this is a solid or a precipitate. So if we want to show this in our chemical equation, well, we can do that as KSP. Now it's products over reactants. So we'd have magnesium 2 plus times hydroxide. Now being that the, the coefficient for hydroxide is 2, we would put a 2 power above that. Now, this is products over reactants is the formula. However, our reactant in this case is a solid, so we don't include it. It would only be represented as the value of 1, assuming that that gets taken out. So being that that is just a 1, we can safely just erase, ignore, and move our expression down and show that the solubility is affected by the concentrations of both hydroxide and magnesium. And in case you're wondering, don't forget that these brackets, they represent concentration, meaning if you think of concentration, then going back to my video on molarity, that is what that is talking about, is the molarity of each of these different species at equilibrium. So what if I asked you the following? If I ask, what is the KSP for the reverse precipitation, for the reverse reaction precipitating out magnesium hydroxide? So what does that mean? So if we had the forward reaction here, how could we show the reverse? Meaning going backwards in this case. So if we want to go backwards, go into the left-hand side, if we want to go back, well, there's a couple ways you can think about this is, well, one is going reverse is also the same thing as saying KSP raised to the negative one for the previous problem, because you're going, you're doing the backwards or the inverse, which means is that instead we're going to have reactants over products, meaning magnesium hydroxide over magnesium and oxide. So if I reverse this value, what this means is that instead we'll have one as it's a solid, over mag magnesium 2 plus and hydroxide. So this is, you can reverse by doing the inverse. So keep that in mind if you need to talk about the other rate. They should still show the same favoritism in the reaction when you calculate the value. So they'll either be showing that maybe the product is going to be favored or the reactant. They're both going to be showing the same favoritism. Meaning magnesium hydroxide, if it's not very soluble, let's say if it exists as a solid mainly, then both reactions are going to show favoring in the direction of magnesium hydroxide. And that's what that all means. So if, K, if the K value, let's say if K was less than 1 for these, well, that tells you that, oh, this is going to be favoring the reactants in this reaction, right? Whereas if I have the inverse, well, being that that inverse is representing the opposite equation of magnesium 2 plus making two hydroxides. So remember, this is all about reverse. So if that's the case, that's going to show how it's favoring the same side. It's going to be favoring magnesium hydroxide. And that's equilibrium for you. It's about both directions going back and forth until the concentrations are constant. So this has been a video on equilibrium. Please see that there'll be future videos, one on Le Chatelier's principle, which will be soon. And there will be practice problems on how to calculate K in the practice problem series. All right, I hope this video helped. If this did help, please like and subscribe or comment below. And I hope to see you around for future videos. Bye now.